Brothers and sisters in church, a lot of times we wonder why we do things. Last week, for those of you that weren't here, we talked about some of the traditions of the church. Now, I'm just going to ask all of you, how many things we do in church do you think, boy, that's weird. wonder why we do that. Okay. Well, I'll speak from my perspective. Why do we have candles in church? Why did I wait this long to light them? Why are my matches not working today? It's usually the computer that keeps me humble. In church, we light candles because it's a representation of the Holy Spirit that came that day on Pentecost. In church, we light the candles because it shows us, it shows us just how God sent his Holy Spirit down to rest on the shoulders of those disciples. You talk about an unlikely group of people to end up being the ministers of the word to the world. I bet you we look around this room, we couldn't even find a motley crew enough out of us to make up 12 like the early disciples. But yet God used them, and God used them to speak his word, speak it and then enable them, empower them to speak without schooling in other languages to reach people of all nations. In Genesis, the 11th chapter, and I'm going to give you the Cliff Note sermon today. Genesis, the 11th chapter, there's something called the Tower of Babel. Have you ever heard? Uh, at, at my house, sometimes I'll have somebody tell me, my wife, she'll say, Tim, you're babbling again. What does this mean? You're not making sense. You're just sort of talking. In Genesis chapter 11, the early people spoke one language, and they got together, and their humbleness was none. And they began to build this tower. It was a tower to heaven. And the people actually said, we will build this so big on our own that God, we will not even need the Almighty anymore. God didn't put up with this too long. God sent down his spirit dividing their languages, dividing them into other nations. The Bible teaches us in that first nine verses that God did this so that we would become humble and reliant not to speak the same language with each other, so we would have to trust more in Him. The day that God showed up in Pentecost was the day that God restored language to communicate. Now in the sermon title today, I've got a long title and I can't remember what it was. Help me out. Good. Waiting, receiving, and responding. How would a movement like Pentecost happen again? How would a movement of God like this happen again in a postmodern society like we live today? How could this happen? See, the same God of yesterday is the same God of today, and the Bible teaches is the same God of tomorrow. This same God. The way they called upon God was they first listened to Jesus' instruction. Jesus' last words were, go to the upper room, pray, be together. As you're together, seek my Father, pray, paraphrase. As Jesus gave these instructions, they went back. Now they didn't know it was going to be ten days from the ascension to the Pentecost day. But when God showed up, it was like a great roaring, roaring storm. The Spirit of God landed on their shoulders and they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit showed up, as these lives were changed, that day, if I would have read the entire text to you, which is 21 more verses, it, towards the end, Peter gives his sermon. And Peter gives an invitation the first invitation of the early church. Peter lets them know it was by our decisions that Jesus ended up dying for us. It was by God's will that Jesus was raised from death to speak on our behalf. The people say, what should we do in this corrupt, broken world? Peter says, believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in him being sent. Turn your life over to Jesus. And then it says, be baptized. And once again it says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
See, there's no sin, no lifestyle, no missing church one Sunday or another that can keep you away from God's love through Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can keep you from the love that God has for you. When I say Jesus loves you and so do I, that's the whole New Testament summed up in seven words. That day, the invitation was given for those to become part of the church, for those that hadn't been to church, for those that didn't have that connection to God and maybe were separated to come. The Bible says that 3,000 were saved that day and added to the numbers. The next verse in the Bible says, the fellowship of believers, they were in awe. They were loving one another, selling their possessions as need, giving to those there was not a need among the community. What would it look like as a church, as a community, if we prayed for God to change everything in us and around us? I'll end with this short point. How long did it take? 60 days. From Good Friday to Pentecost. It was a fast turn around and change. Today I stand before you and I just say the invitation that Jesus gave through the early church is the invitation that the church gives today. The book of Acts doesn't end. The book of Acts doesn't, doesn't say the end. The story continues. You are the church today. And Jesus invites you and I speak on his behalf to come into a relationship with him. If you're here today and you've never been in church or you're, you're in church and you think, boy, I, the building was going to fall down if I came in, I thought those thoughts 15 years ago myself. Never thought I'd be on this end of the church speaking. So be it. This building was built well. God's love endures forever. Jesus reaches across all lines, forgives everything in our lives, and asks, do you want to be part of this? Do you want to receive my love? Do you want your family to be baptized? Do you want to know that the Lord's love is real? I end it right there today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today and ask God that as we see the early church, the movement, God, of the early church, the love, the hope that was there, God, we realize the power of the Holy Spirit coming down like little tongues of fire, just like these little candles are lit, and resting on the shoulders of those that were to speak on your behalf, Lord. I pray for each person here, each family, and also for each person that's not here that is part of the day school and the community, that, Lord, each of us can go from here maybe receiving, maybe believing, maybe growing deeper in Jesus' love, offering that opportunity to others to come to Christ, to renew their life, to know that there's a church right around the corner that prays for each of them every week. So in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords, the God of gods, the one that the Lord sent to be born of Mary, we do pray and thank you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.